everybody, I'm God's Girl, and welcome to the very first episode of God's Odds. I am so excited about this series. This is something that God had put in my spirit about a month ago, I would say, and I just started uh, getting all these ideas uh, for this series out of the stories out of the Bible of how God uh, parted the seas, um, how he slayed the giant through David, and uh, how he rescued Daniel out of the lion's den. There's so many stories. There's so many in the Bible of how God worked a miracle out of an impossible situation. Things that were impossible for man. You know, Jesus said, Jesus himself said, said, with man, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And so that is really the point of this series, is that with God, all things are possible, even out of nothing. That when you're down to nothing, that's, that's the perfect amount that God needs for a miracle is nothing. And the Bible is absolutely full of stories of how God brought a miracle out of nothing. Things that are beyond human comprehension, out, that, that doesn't make sense in the physical. You know, we're going to be looking at stories that doesn't make sense in the physical, this physical life. But it makes sense in the spirit by God. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this series. I'm so excited to finally get the first episode out. I'm going to be doing more of these. Going to do as many episodes as God puts in my spirit. I know that I want to cover uh, Abraham. We're going to cover Moses. We're going to cover David, uh, Daniel, and uh, whoever else God gives me. There's so many. Gideon, I want to cover him as well. So we're going to have uh, episodes for each of these and how God worked in an impossible situation. He made the impossible possible. He worked from, he made something out of nothing. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today in episode one of God's Odds. We are going to be talking about the creation of the world and we're going to be looking at Adam. Adam was the first man on this earth that had a need before God because everybody we're going to be looking at had an impossible need and God met that need every time. So Adam was the first man on this earth that had a need in life. And so, you know, we all have needs. We all, everybody has some kind of need in their life. We all do uh, in our flesh, whether it be healing, whether it be um, whether it be a job, whether it be finances, whether it be companionship, we all have a need for something. And so uh, we're going to be looking at how God can can move the mountains and make a way in our needs. We're going to look at the examples that God has already done through the people in the Bible. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God worked a miracle for Adam, the very first man on this earth, he can work a miracle for us today. We are the last people of this earth. Everybody knows we're living in the last of the days of this earth. Adam lived at the beginning of time. We are all living at the end of time. And God is still the same from day one until the day that he decides to uh, do away with this earth and create the new earth that the Bible says we're going to live in. God is the same. And so he can still work in our need, us living in the last of the days, just as he worked out that need for Adam living in the beginning of days. So let's go ahead and look at today's, what we're looking at in today's word. Well, today I want to look at how God created the earth out of nothing. Because like I said, that's what we're going to be looking at a lot in this series is how God made something out of nothing. He worked a miracle out of nothing. And so it's fitting 
that God made this whole earth out of nothing. Out of nothing. Let's look at the scripture on it. Let's look at the scripture. It says in it says in Psalm 33 9 it says for when he spoke the world began it appeared at his command so we see that God spoke the world into existence let's look at Hebrews 11 3 by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So what is seen, what we can see, was made. It says what is seen was made out of what is not seen. Okay? So... So like I said, God works best when there is no materials to be found. Okay, so God spoke the world into existence. If he can speak the world that we are living on right now, he spoke it into existence out of nothing. God made something out of nothing. So God can work the same miracle in our own life. God can make visible, he can make visible in our life out of what is not visible. And so that's why we got to trust him in these waiting times, guys. That's why we got to trust because the Bible is our proof that God can do it, that God will do it in his right time. So let's go ahead and look at Adam, guys. Like I said, Adam was the first man on this earth to have a need before God. And so it says right here in Genesis chapter 2, it said, it says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. All right, now let's go further down in the chapter. And it says, But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Okay, so God had made up his mind already. He saw the need that Adam had. It said, uh, it said, God saw it's not good for this man to be all alone. He needs companionship. He needs a partner. And so it says that he said, I will make a helper suitable for him. So just, so God is already working on this need that Adam has. Because later on, he just had said, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. No suitable helper was found. God just said, I will make him a helper suitable for him. I will make a, 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 a helper that will be just what he needs, just how he needs it. So this was the very first need uh, that mankind ever had. This was the first need of the first man of this planet. Adam needed companionship. He needed a partner. He didn't need to have to do all this alone. It wasn't God. It wasn't God's will. God said it's not right for him to be alone. God saw the need and he provided for that need. And you know how he did it, y'all? You know, it would have been miraculous if God just formed a woman the way he formed Adam. You know, the way God formed this whole earth out of nothing. It says that God made Adam out of the dirt, out of the dirt of the land. God formed the man's body and And then he breathed life into him and he became a living being. I mean, that's a miracle in itself. So God could have worked a miracle for Adam just like that. Let me make him a a woman and I'll make her the same way I made him. But that's not what it says. God did something. God did something extra miraculous, I would say. He said that it caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. Let's read it the way the Bible says it. It says, but for Adam... 
no suitable helper was found so the lord god caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh then the lord god made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man and the man said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman for she was taken out of a man so god made adam out of the dirt and then god made eve out of adam that's amazing guys these are these are the type of miracles i'm talking about that is beyond that is beyond our 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 human brain guys this is beyond science this is beyond what makes sense because so many miracles that we're going to learn about in this series it was done out of ways that just don't make any sense it just doesn't make sense and sometimes god works god does work best when he's wanting to do something in our life that just doesn't make any sense and so this is this is the case for adam he needs a mate and so god causes him to fall into a deep sleep he takes a rib out of the man and forms this woman this perfect helpmate for adam and he brings her to him and now he's not alone his need has been met god has met the need and he didn't need many he did not need much materials guys god did not need he didn't need any material again god spoke the whole world into existence all on his own by faith by faith the world was formed and founded that's why jesus said if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can tell a mountain to throw itself in the river that is why because you cannot underestimate the power of our faith again jesus said all things are possible to them that believe it but sometimes god ain't going to give us what we need just right away day one that we have the need because he wants to establish a relationship with us first adam needed to establish a relationship with god first before god handed eve over to him praise god so we're gonna end it right here guys we're gonna end the episode right here i believe we've covered everything we wanted to say today so i'm going to end us out in prayer so if everyone will please join with me right now dear lord we thank you father for this day and we thank you for your word We thank you for speaking to us today through your word, the way you always speak to us, Lord. We thank you that if we need to hear from you, all we got to do is open our Bible, pull up our Bible apps, whatever. All we got to do is get into your word if we need to hear from you, Lord. So we thank you for giving us this word today, Lord. We thank you, Father, that it was God's odds that allowed Adam to have a wife from his own flesh to have a partner to have companionship all the things that he was lacking lord you wanted adam to feel what it was like to lack sometimes we got to be humbled and we got to feel the lack of life before we can enjoy the blessing before the need can be fully met we got to feel what it feels like to lack we need to feel the lack so that we will so that we will adequately, Lord, we will adequately be able to thank you for the fulfillment of our need. Without the feeling of lack, we cannot fully appreciate the fulfillment of what you have for us. So Lord, we thank you today for the lack. We thank you for any and all of us that are going through a season of lack right now. God, I pray you help every one of us today, everyone listening right now, Lord, to make sure to establish a relationship with you first. Father, take our minds off of our needs and whatever it is that our heart desires, God, and let us have our hearts set and fixed on you first. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. You will add unto us. You will add.
the needs that we have. God, you will fulfill it if we are keeping you first, if we are seeking you first, if we are making sure this desire and this need in our heart is really from you, Lord God. So, Father, I pray you search our hearts today, oh Lord. Search our hearts. Search our hearts today that our hearts are 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 desiring the right things, Lord, and that you're putting godly desires in our hearts and that we're going to have faith, Father. We're going to believe and we're going to lean on our relationship with you until the, the need is met and fulfilled. And then we're going to give you all the praise and the glory. We're going to honor you with the gifts that you've given us. We're going to honor you with the ministry, Lord, the ministry that you're giving us, Father. Many are called to the ministry. We're going to honor you with the job opportunities that you've given us, Father, with the financial gain you've given us. We're going to honor you, Father, for giving us a spouse, giving us children, giving us babies, giving us grandchildren. We're going to honor you in these things, Lord. When we have seen the fulfillment of the need, Lord, that we're going to honor you in it because we know that it is only by you that we have these things. That's why you want us to go through seasons of lack so that when the fulfillment come, when the blessing comes, we'll know who it came from. Hallelujah. That it was nothing of our own, but it was God. It was God's odds that got me here. Not by my own way, but by the hand and the power of the Holy Spirit. It was only by my God's hand that I am where I am today. Not by my strength, but by his alone. So, Father, we thank you for this today, Lord. We thank you. I ask you to encourage, Father, everybody listening today that is heavy-hearted and downcast. Father, I pray that you lift their spirits today. Father, knowing and, and being reminded of your promises, being reminded of your word, that you work best when there is no materials to be found. You don't need any materials. You made, you spoke this earth into existence. The Bible says you spoke it and so it was. You made man out of the dust, out of the dirt, of the ground. You don't need any materials, God. You can make it out of nothing. So those that are listening today and they're downhearted because they've been waiting forever on something, Lord, I pray that you encourage their hearts today, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would fill them with the joy of the Lord, that you would renew their spirits, renew them with the power of the Holy Ghost in their hearts today, Father, as they are trusting in you and as they are believing, they they are believing, Father, for what it is that you have promised. Father, I pray that you comfort their hearts and I pray, Father, that they feel a charge in their spirits today, that you are able, that you are more than enough, that you're going to meet the need in the appointed time, God. So, Father, I pray you encourage each and every one of us that is waiting on our appointed times in life. Help us to honor you along the way. Help us to serve you every day and help us to keep you first. Have that established relationship with you that Adam had to have before his need was met. May we all have an established relationship. And Lord, I pray right now for anybody listening that does not know you personally. And this is all brand new information to them today. Lord, I pray right now that you would convict anyone's hearts right now listening that does not have and does not know a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that that they would begin to confess their sins, as the Bible says, to confess their sins unto you. It's not difficult. Father, I pray you show them that all you got to do is open your mouth. Open your mouth to God. Open your mouth to Jesus. The Bible says there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. Only the name of Jesus Christ can save you to anyone listening that doesn't know this. Only the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's what the Bible says and the Bible proves itself to be true. The Bible proves itself. God has proven himself through his word and it never fails. So we know That if it says that Jesus has died for our sins so that we can have a relationship with God, 
because else wise in our sinful flesh we couldn't and we were set we are all separated from God naturally by our sinful flesh but through Jesus Christ we can be redeemed God Jesus paid the price for our sins he has redeemed us in full he lived a sinless life so that he could be the perfect sacrifice so I pray right now for anyone listening, Lord, that they will call on the name of Jesus Christ for salvation. They will confess their sins and that you'll begin to break their spirits, Father. You'll begin to break them down, a broken and contrite spirit. The Bible says God will not deny. So, Father, I ask that you would begin to heal their hearts. I pray you begin to heal their minds, heal their pain, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you guys so much uh, for listening and for watching today. I want to encourage anybody that uh, did just say a, a prayer for the first time to Jesus, confessing your sins and asking to be cleansed of your sins to receive the gift of salvation. I, I want to ask you to please uh, reach out to me. Um, my email is in my description box below so that I can uh, further uh, minister to you in your new walk with Christ. Um, also, uh, y'all can leave prayer requests in my comment section or if you have a private prayer request, you can also email me with any uh, prayer requests because it's my honor to pray for y'all. So I thank you guys for watching, and I ask you to please thumbs up, uh, share out, and leave a comment. I appreciate it so, so much, and I will see y'all in the next episode of God's Odds. And until then, please know that I am praying for each of you, and I ask you to please, please, please pray for me too. So until next time, I love you guys. Bye!